let me show you how I draw light. Well, not really drawing light, but rather how we use tonal values to create an emphasis on light and on light sources. And this is a lovely scene to do this, this stairway in Palais Garnier. And here, ready to go, I have a pen outline of this scene. And if after watching this, you'd like to have a go at applying tone to this scene, I'm going to post both of these on my community page. So you can screenshot and print off copies of both. And without having to go through the ordeal of drawing the outline, you can go straight to the tone and play with creating various effects. You can try several different versions if you want. I'm using Copic sketch markers and I'll be using the brush end. I use the neutral gray color and I've got on hand N0 to N6. So that gives me seven gradated tones of gray. And this is what they are. So this is always handy to have close by. N0 is the lightest tone. And what I like to do when I have a light source such as this is to define the areas that are going to be absolute white. Now there won't be much absolute white on this page because I want these lights to really shine. And the only way they can shine is if I make the area around them darker. But as you can see, there is a bit of a halo effect. So what I'm going to do with the N0 is to, in effect, capture the silhouette of these. It will, it will also remind me to, to preserve that space when I'm working close to it. When I've done that, I'm going to continue to put a bit of this N0 in some of the lighter areas and then come back with some darker tones. We read the value of a tone against a different value. So light looks light, not so much because of what it is, but because in comparison with what's around it, it looks light or dark for that matter. Which means a lot of the final decisions as to how dark or light we should be making various parts of our scene can't really be decided confidently too early on. So it is good to start light and more in the middle and then push the darker parts. Once we've got some values established as a reference, we can always go darker, but we can't make things lighter. So let's start. So using my N0, I've preserved the white that I want to have left as absolute white. And I've also established the lightest tones next to that. Now I'm going to switch from N0 to N1 and do something similar, but just to come a bit closer to the lights, but still trying to establish a halo effect between the N1 and the N0. So this is one, one tone darker. Once I've got a sense of the actual lights here happening, then I can start to worry about some stronger values. Now I'm going to get a 0 0.2 and just push a few areas just a little bit darker just because I'm still trying to establish a range of values that I can then use to make further adjustments. So I'll switch now to a 0 0.2. As you can see, this is still a relatively light value 
compared to the three, four, and five that we'll certainly be using in parts, and even the six that we'll be using in some of these foreground parts. It's always a bit tricky filming applying tone because it always looks darker through the camera than it does on the paper. And at this point, the dark bits look really very dark. However, I'm going to now work with some of the darkest areas down in the front and then some of the dark areas of local color in the clothing of our patrons as they ascend the staircase because that's going to give us a different sense of the tonal values of these shadows in the building. I'm going to be using my N4, 5s and 6s down here.
So establishing some of these darker shadows down the front does certainly change the feel of the overall scene. So what I want to do now is to work some still darker shades into some of our more recessed sections. And I think I want to get these sculptures done and do the clothing up here. And then we'll see where we are. But there is a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this is a good sort of subject to hang loose with our reference a little bit and to make adjustments that seem to bring out the three dimensionality of the scene. And I did, I did push myself to an N7 here and here, and I think there, and highlights there. So, so the range of this now is N0 to N7. I think this will do. It's a bit like painting. It's hard to know when to put the paintbrush down. But I think I've created enough variations between light and dark. Actually, no, I, I think I, I think I want to make these areas just a bit darker to tie them in more with these very front figures. So I'm not sure what I used there, if it was a four or a five. I'm thinking it was a four. And I think that works better. I'm not, I mean, while I've tried to create a sense of separation with these figures, in our reference photo, there is very little separation visually between them at all. And by leaving some light silhouettes on these figures on their right side shoulders, it gives an indication that there's a, that there's a light source above and to the right that we can't see, which I think also creates a nice effect. I hope you notice how much back and forth there was, how many areas were done several times. 
And while this can be extravagant, we think it really does work quite well to progress back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One thing I found is effective to aim for is to avoid too many mid-tones or similar tones together unless we actually want to create a fairly solid block of tone, particularly darker tone as I wanted to do down here to help increase the effect of sparkle further up. But you'll notice here I've left these figures completely white to contrast them against the fairly lighter, lightish tones behind them. And here I've made these figures relatively dark with tone but I've left the wall in front of them quite light to help them stand out more. So it's this back and forth, back and forth and just making slight adjustments to our reference so that we create contrasts that help the tonal values that we choose stand out. There's just one last thing to do now. If you've enjoyed this tonal tutorial, please hit like and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Don't forget, I've posted the outline version of this scene on my community page as well as this image. So if you'd like to have a go or several goes playing around with tonal values and creating the effect of light in an interior space, then you can jump straight to the part you're interested in and bypass the line work stage. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this fun and interesting, but even more so helpful. Why not give it a go? And whatever you do, when you're drawing, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.